Denton, Texas is the site of an ongoing battle between its residents and the oil and gas companies that want to drill within its city limits. As one of the most fracked cities in America, Denton stands not only as the birthplace of a practice that exploded 20 years ago, but now as its new frontier. Fracking involves pumping millions of gallons of water and chemicals deep underground to free gas trapped in shale rock, but studies have linked it to health, environmental, and water risks. When the town approved a straight ban on fracking last year, the oil and gas industry responded with lawsuits and pushed the state to pass House Bill 40, a harsh piece of legislation that could serve as a blueprint for other states that want to quell popular dissent. To understand why they did that, you have to go back to November 5th, the day after the vote uh, for the fracking ban. Adam Briggle is an activist with Frack Free Denton, as well as an associate professor at the University of North Texas. So the industry knew that our ban was likely defensible under the current uh, legal regime at the time, and so they spent much of, much of their effort trying to buy a new law down in Austin, essentially. And that's what HB 40 is. It's a law that everybody agreed made our ban at that point unenforceable. So the reason to repeal the ban had to do with those existing lawsuits, because we had to find some way to get out of those lawsuits. And so Denton City Council, I think, ultimately made the decision it's better to repeal the ban than to have it go to a court where it would face a near certain ruling against us that it would be unconstitutional. And what would be bad about that is it would give HB 40 some legal precedent uh, and it would become something more than just the product of a corrupt political process. So we were really looking for a long-term strategy here and, and picking a, a different battleground to, to fight on. Briggle is one of three activists, along with filmmakers Candace Byrne and Garrett Graham, The Real News spoke to about the battle over fracking in Denton. What uh, is not getting a, not, a, a lot of press, uh, HB 40 undermines and reverses an 85-year tradition that was in place in Texas. It, it's a tradition that didn't have a name, and it wasn't a statutory tradition, but it was upheld through the court system. If you look back over the last 85 years, municipalities have beat the industry every single time the industry has challenged local regulations, and that's because the courts were applying what I call a community reasonable test, which is they looked first to defer to local government's judgment about what they need to do to protect the health and safety of their citizens. And that's why the, the cities had such a long winning track record. This new four-part uh, test that HB 40 establishes, the, really the key to it is that term commercially reasonable. That becomes a new standard which is the exact opposite of community reasonable. That's despite 59% of voters in Denton approving the ban in November. The ballot initiative also withstood the $700,000 influx of campaign money companies like Chesapeake Energy funneled into the effort, 10 times what frack-free Denton raised. Burnt isn't surprised because she says that HB 40 is part of a nationwide effort to shrink local jurisdiction and transfer it into the hands of corporate entities. You know, it's a law that erodes local control and local democracy, and it's also connected to ALEC, the, Amer the American Legislative Exchange Council. Um, basically, these guys are a shadowy corporate bill mill, and what they do is they get together in a room. Um, and it, it brings together the corporate lobbyists, the corporate representatives, and the lawmakers. And they basically vote on which legislation will be introduced in state houses across the U.S. And, and that's what HB 40 is. Um, Phil King is a co-author of HB 40. He serves as the national chair of ALEC this year. He also received 41,000 in oil and, and gas contributions in the 2014 election cycle. Um, Drew Darby, the, the primary author of HB 40, received close to 65,000 um, in oil and gas contributions in that same election cycle. That's from the uh, Texans for Public Justice. In some ways, the town's fierce opposition to the drilling process, coupled with the oil and gas industry's itch or need to develop Denton, has created a test tube scenario whereby corporate forces can explore and experiment through new legal avenues. That's what the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC, is doing in Denton. They're using a dual strategy of passing preemptive laws like HB 40 and also overwhelming Denton with lawsuits. ALEC is already a sort of institution that, that undermines democracy and the writing rules that simply eviscerate it that much more. Um, so we're, we're just looking at the erosion of democracy on many levels here. Um, and, and now you're seeing the same sort of preemption strategy being used in Oklahoma to, to undermine uh, local control, local regulations of oil and gas, as well as Florida. Um, and they've also used this preemption strategy, um, again, 
you know, to beat back other sort of progressive wins, such as minimum wage um, hikes, as well as paid sick leave. So this is this is broader than even oil and gas. Burnt and Graham are currently working on a documentary that chronicles the fight in Denton over fracking. After Denton became the first city in Texas to successfully ban fracking, we thought that our job as documentary filmmakers was pretty pretty done and over. And it was actually in the process of editing together what would have been a short documentary about the successful fracking ban into what is now a much longer feature length documentary about a much broader movement, not just about fracking in Denton, but now, you know, basically a local control, pro-democracy kind of struggle that I think should be relevant to uh, anybody who feels themselves encroached upon by industrial activity or who feels sort of out of town market forces stripping them of their rights to determine what happens to their neighborhood, their air and their water. We gotta slow this chaos down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying stop this fracking now. People gonna rise like the water. We gotta slow this chaos down. As the fight continues, the conflict between left and right Democrat versus Republican is giving way to another narrative, one that pits local welfare against the interests of corporate outsiders. That narrative surfaced in an interview Texas Railroad Commissioner Christy Craddock gave with the Texas Tribune right after the ban was approved in November. Should cities be allowed to regulate, this was specifically on the Denton question, should cities be allowed to regulate that aspect of drilling if that's what they decide they want? And your response was personally no. And I still agree with that. I thought you guys on the Republican side of the line liked local control. Local control's great. Yeah. On a lot of respects. But I think you've got a lot. I'm the expert in oil and gas. The city of Denton is not. What began as preserving local autonomy in Denton has ballooned into a struggle for local autonomy across the state and across the country. So the opposition has paid people $15 an hour to stand at the polls and confuse people and lie to people. And that's terrible. So we're going to be the voice of clarity. The stark battle between community control and commercial control has prompted frack-free Denton to migrate outside of the city in search of other cities that can form a coalition and then oppose HB 40 as a united entity. Although a lot of people here in Denton um, are understandably having a lot of uh, hard feelings about what's been done to what they've been working on so hard for so long, I think that uh, the scope of this struggle has really expanded rapidly. And I'm not sure if the uh, oil and gas industry really kind of understands what they've done. Um, I think that they thought that they could swat this thing down really quickly and easily with uh, all of their considerable wealth and power. But um, my hope and my um, projection is that they've stirred up a hornet's nest of resistance. For The Real News, Thomas Hedges, Washington.